Good morning, everybody. I think one of the things we all love to do when we get a chance to go to Washington, D.C. is visit the memorials. And it was on this date in 1943, April 13, that Franklin Roosevelt dedicated the Jefferson Memorial 200 years after Jefferson was born. Here's a map of the original streetscape for Washington, D.C., and note that the Potomac River on the left has no canal or channel or anything like it, but on this map it does. And the idea was to connect the Potomac to what was called the East Branch. Today it's the Anacostia River. But that canal didn't work. It silted up, and eventually the tidal basin was built. So on this map, you can see the tidal basin is to the left of the Washington Channel. And even today, there are gates that control the ebb and flow of the tide to keep both bodies of water from getting too silty. But that's uh, why that tidal basin is there. So here's Franklin Roosevelt. He was a big fan of Thomas Jefferson, partly because he knew one of the biographers of Jefferson. So when the cornerstone was laid in 1939, FDR was there, pictured here. So the memorial was built during World War II, and it was on this date, April 13, in 1943, that FDR was there to dedicate the memorial. And in this photograph from the newspaper, you can see FDR in the front and center. So this is the Pantheon in Rome. It's still there, dates back to about 100, and this was the inspiration for some of the design of the Jefferson Memorial. When it came time for the landscape architecture, they hired Frederick Law Olmsted Jr., whose dad had designed Central Park and other green spaces in the country that are pretty famous. And uh, they're trying to restore it to the original landscaping plan. I guess it's been changed a little bit, but now it's, it's more like the original. So one of the big issues early on was what to do with the cherry trees. So this map shows where all the cherry trees were planted in 1912, gifts from Japan. And when the memorial was first proposed, many of those trees were to be cut. But people protested. There were demonstrations. The plan was changed. And now the cherry trees coexist happily with the Jefferson Memorial. So here's a picture of the memorial itself. You can see it's quite open to the elements. It's got the dome like the Pantheon in Rome. It also has some of the pillars. The steps go down to the tidal basin. And Jefferson is more or less looking north. I think what strikes people about this is how open it is to the weather. Another thing about it is if you look to the left of the memorial, you can see the Lincoln Memorial. And then if you look north, you can see the Washington Monument and the White House. So over the years, they had to do some tree trimming to make sure that you could see uh, all these monuments together. In the top part of the pediment are five men. These were the Committee of Five who wrote the Declaration. Jefferson himself, John Adams, Benjamin Franklin, Roger Sherman, and Robert Livingston. So these are the five guys who worked on the Declaration. Inside the memorial is a 19-foot-tall statue of Jefferson. On the inside, on the various walls, are excerpts of writings like the Declaration, letters, other things that he wrote uh, to people or in his own notebooks. The original stature was plaster until they could get the bronze to finish it. So Jefferson is looking north, and many people think he's looking at the White House, but one theory is he's actually looking at the Treasury Department, and that's the black line I drew here. Now, why would he look at the Treasury Department? Well, guess who's in front of it? Alexander Hamilton. Hamilton and Jefferson disagreed about most things politically, but they were founders. So one theory is, is that Jefferson is acknowledging his fellow founder. So here's a great aerial view of the Tidal Basin and the Washington Channel in the lower right. You see the Jefferson Memorial. In the distance, the Lincoln Memorial. To the right, the Washington Memorial. A reminder 
how great it is to visit Washington, D.C.